Work on petting her down this leg, keeping an eye on her nose. I don't feel like getting bit in the butt today. So we have Casey and Owen going out into the wilderness, currently to find the wild horses of the 10 acre pasture. Oh, he just has a lot of this one tooth. There's just a crazy amount of calculus buildup. This is Spanky. We are fixing the surface of his teeth so that way he can hopefully eat better and then gain weight as well. This is Georgia and we are about to do radiographs on her feet. Yeah, that sucks. No better. So I'm about to work Carol in snow, but first we're going to put Moon Pie away. Uh, for those of you that don't know Moon Pie, she is this sorrel mare right here. And she is very pretty. But she was a big lick mare, and they actually found her in a stall with the barn that the doors were barely just cracked, so she didn't get much sunlight. And when they finally found her, she had worked herself so far down in her stall that they had to look over the edge of the stall just to see her down in there. So she is going to be adopted out as a pasture pet. And she seems to respond to men a lot better. Um, whenever I walk out there to get her, she comes right up to me and lets me catch her. Um, whenever it's one of the girls walking out there, she tends to run away from them, but she's very sweet. And yeah, she's a pasture ornament. So take her home. So this is Carol. I'm sure most of you already know. But uh, we're gonna work on catching her in the pen today without using the chute. If she wants to leave, that's fine. I'll keep going towards her. If she looked at me, I'll stop a minute. I'm just gonna wait for her to settle on me. Hey, Carol. That's what I wanted right there. I wanted to kind of have her turn towards it. I'm coming up over here. And now I got a little bit of a wrap on her neck there. So I'll keep her coming this way. And I could actually apply pressure with this and wait for her to look at me and then take it away. She must have had a traumatic experience or really bad handling. We got her at auction, so there's no telling what happened to her when she was going through the slaughter pipeline. And a lot of times with horses like this, when you just get that done, best thing you could do is call that good. Let him hang out with you for a little bit. She's gonna be one where I'm probably gonna have to work at least once a day. I might just do this a couple more times and let her go. Let her know that every single time that I come out here to put a halter on you, it's not the end of the world. And you don't always have to work hard. You may have to work hard to let me get this halter on you, but that's all you got to do for that day. Come on in, Snow. The water's fine. I'm petting her down this leg, keeping an eye on her nose. I don't feel like getting bit in the butt today. I'm ask you to pick this up. She got it up for me pretty nicely. So now that she's checking out on all that stuff, I'll climb up here on the fence. I'm gonna do my fence work. Ask her to come over here. I want her to get right up next to me. And every single time she tries to get closer, I'll make sure she knows that she's doing what I want her to do. So I'm on the fence to kind of get her used to something being above her. Um, this will kind of help simulate what she's gonna see when you're up in the saddle. It just gets them more prepared for you to ride them and there's no way you can get bucked off this fence. What I like to do, once she's up here, I'll get my leg over, I'll start touching her with my foot. On your shoulder, down your back, I'll try to touch her butt with it. And I'll try to slowly start sinking down. Get my leg on there. When she feels like she needs to leave, I might step up a little bit, ease off. 
She didn't really need to leave that time. Usually she's off that way when I get that leg over. So I'll let her think about that. And then I'm gonna ask her to step up and get her right where I want her to be. And that's perfect right there. And I'll give her a minute to settle. Now this is something I was taught at the college I went to, Feather River College. Uh, we're doing our colt starting class. Before we could saddle our horses up, we had to get on the fence and actually sit on them on the fence. Do you think she's been ridden before? I have no idea. When we first got her, she was pretty much completely unhandled, or at least she acted like it. But then again, you can never tell with the ones that we get from slaughter and the slaughter pipeline. Um, there's a possibility that she has been ridden before and, you know, then they go through there and they get really soured up to people because the only thing they see is people hitting them and waving stuff at them and smacking them around. And they get really sore at people. They don't want anything to do with them. I think we're gonna pull the saddle out today. I do wanna see if she'll take a bit though. Now your mouth can do something besides bite me. Whenever I introduce something new to her, like she gets like this. Like, her ears are kind of sideways, like what's going on? And her aggression almost leaves her for a minute. Right there. Overall, she did really good. She's still trying to bite me a few times, but uh, I think I figured out her number there. I put the bit in her mouth and it's got copper in there, so that copper will make them salivate more, which makes them work their mouth more, which in turn will actually release more dopamine and endorphins in their brain. She might be one of the horses I work every day during the week, so I'll pull her back out tomorrow, see how she does with everything else. And hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have a saddle on her back. I'm at a quarantine intake barn and I have a wireless bridge in my hand. What this is going to do is it's going to bring the internet from the office way over there to up here so that our staff can effectively do what they need to do up here. We can have live videos. We can do all kinds of things up here with high speed internet, assuming it works. So I'm going to get to work. And it says it's connected, so we'll see. It's not super fast, but I think mission accomplished. We have high-speed internet up in the quarantine intake barn. How you doing, John? What's wrong with you? I don't know what happened, but after Horse Rescue Heroes, I've never been, it's never been the same anymore. <laughs> Took a lot out of you. You did. Well, out of all of us, how are you doing? I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. But I have my trusty uh, chicken to motivate me. Wow. <sighs> Felt better. That helped me too. Yep. Nice. Okay, back to work. All right. He says it smells healthy. So you're getting all kinds of treats today. Nope. I think I have a two year old that would look cute on your back. <laughs> So this is Wrangler. He was an owner surrender that we had in June, and he's very sweet. Oh, CJ's got cookies. <laughs> oh, sweet boy. Bye, Wrangler. <laughs> Be good. So we are up in quarantine today. We are running back through everybody to do weight checks, health checks, and then to re-give antibiotics to everyone that got it last week. So we have Casey and Owen going out into the wilderness, currently to find the wild horses of the 10 acre pasture. Then they'll bring them up. We'll reweigh them and give them medical care. Yeah, you're the good one. I see you. No, friend, come back. Yep, I knew I liked you the most. We're gonna enjoy our new Wi-Fi up here. 
for all of those people that said it'd be much quicker if you brought a computer up, now we can. She came into auction like that. She did, however, have a wrap on at auction. Whoever brought her there wrapped it, so that was good. Um, it wasn't open and, you know, exposed to everything. We've been wrapping it every day, and it actually looks like it's doing really, really, really well, healthy tissue. So we're just gonna keep doing that. Let's do this and surpass. Was that the moisture? I think that was the, that was the moisture one we used. We can use this and surpass. And I think it's also partially a antibiotic too. Okay. I just can't do it. So I'm super allergic to sulfa medications and Casey is super allergic to penicillin. So also together we make one full tech. <laughs> <laughs> we balance each other. She wasn't too happy about us wrapping her at auction though. So I think she's a lot happier here. Oh, he just has a lot of this one too. There's just a crazy amount of calculus buildup. Oh yeah. That you could probably just break off, but. And how old is he? He's only 10. He's got cataracts in his eyeballs. So we just finished the 10 acre, everyone's looking great in there. And now we are running up the first pasture, which is our um, skinnier ones and our babies. She came in last week at 723 pounds and she is at 779, so doing well. Chill, my friend. First the Jenna. He's supposed to be eight months. A year for the stud colt. She's the eight month. She's gonna be huge. She's a hoss. You know you like it. <laughs> she said socialization is vital. She's so big for eight months. Hey, let me see your face. Like some of our adult horses are her size. I just stand there for a minute. You're so cute. Look at your little nose. Yeah, she's off again. She's gained weight though too. She's gained about 30 pounds. Oh, that's good. Take her tag off, take her tag off. Auction tag. Shoot. I didn't even see that till just now. now it's official. It. Her auction tag. So Beautiful. 7302, no more. <laughs> we were told at the auction that she was horse people aggressive. I think she's just painful. Um, she's partially blind in both eyes. She only has about 20 to 30% of her vision. Um, she has a decreased pupillary light response. So if we put a light in her eye, she doesn't really constrict as much as she should. She has a decreased menace response. So if you bring a finger towards her eye, um, she doesn't really do much with that either. And she also has really painful thoracic spine and withers as well. So she's gonna be getting further diagnostics and see if some of the spiciness is from pain. Good job. Good job, sis. What? What are we doing with our tongue? <laughs> what the? That is funny. Do these quarantine pastures have salt blocks? She's licking a lot, so she may be mineral deficient. Um, and just need more salt. Um, so we're gonna add more salt to her pasture as well, but. It could lot. also just be like a vice. Some yeah. horses just do weird stuff like that. Yeah. It could be like a coping thing. I mean, yeah. animals do weird things to, to cope or when they get bored. Yeah. Snack break. She's cute. So this sweetie has a lot of skin issues, respiratory infection and ruptured lymph nodes. So there's a good chance she's strangled. So that's why 
we saved her for last so that way um, we didn't contaminate anyone else and then I'm going to de decontaminate myself before we go down. But we're just gonna clean out her little ruptured abscesses, give her some more antibiotics and give her some love. Oh, it does feel so good. Why is it so watery? That is not. Shake it, the gel is at the that bottom. That is not lotion. Equiderma lotion, so it just helps with like ringworm, um, any type of like skin infection. So we just got done in quarantine running everybody back through. Um, we also was were doing antibiotics and weight checks on everybody and it went really well. We had a couple little spastic ones, but that's okay. What was your favorite? My favorite? Little tiny one. Little Philly? Yeah, the little Philly we got. Who was your favorite? Um, I like the standard breads. They're sweet. We have the standard breads are super three of sweet. Them, I think. Yeah. And they're all super great. We had a lot that had really good weight gain. Um, and then yeah. lo and behold, our most critical one, the pony, though she may be little, she is strong and feisty. Um, but she got her antibiotics again, so it was great. It's good teamwork. Rhett is being picked up today, and I think they're gonna look at Madrid also. Hi, girl. She's very nice on the ground. Um, in the saddle, like I said, she's just really sensitive to leg pressure. I could get up there and show you. Okay. I'm just gonna pick her feet out real quick, get her tacked up, and then I'll okay. show her off a little bit. And her name again is? Madrid, or er, Madrid. They're gonna be spoiled bad. <laughs> but you can take Rhett's photo from looking for love and move him over to found love this Here. month. We had an adopter come out and look at Rhett, absolutely fell in love with him and decided to adopt him. They weren't able to pick him up that day, so he uh, came like a week later with his wife and they ended up taking not only Rhett home, but she fell in love with Madrid. So Madrid and Rhett are going to the same home and we know they're gonna be spoiled rotten. All right, so this is a good example of an in-betweener. We're not quite at gum line. I'm gonna float this towards his teeth, but we are like, let me get him actually on my shoulder. Probably 28. Oh okay. my word. Spanky. 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 Okay. Can you say his name? Spanky. Spanky. No, no. <laughs> Spanky. You can't say it with like a not straight face. This is Spanky. She is floating his teeth. He's, um, underweight despite eating and so we are fixing the surface of his teeth so that way he can hopefully eat better and then gain weight as well. Oh my gosh you guys this is like this poor horse. He's got a lot of he's gonna be better. Um he is still gonna have difficulty with his weight. He's only gonna have like 75% of an occlusal surface but it's gonna be so much better. Uh, this is really hard. <laughs> Horse heads are very heavy. <laughs> Anybody who adopts him should know that he's going to need some senior feed grainies. But I think he's going to... Thank you. I think we're great. Thank you so much. I think he's going to do a lot better now that he can actually chew his food. We have Fluffy out. She was an under surrender that came to us. And she is in her 30s so she is an older pony but today we have dr lydia here to check teeth and um, do her intake can you see this look at that tooth it's like a dagger right there you see how sharp that is it's like a needle it's a, like literally like a needle she needs a lot more work but we did reduce Yes, she's gonna be like 80% more comfortable. 
But before she gets adopted, I wanna do more and we're gonna use dorm torb on her next time. Um, possibly if we get to the very end of today, if she's all the way wide awake, but look at that. Her jaw couldn't, her jaw physically could not move at all when we started. <laughs> Because a regular hand float is not gonna cut that reduction. She needs a power float done before she gets adopted. I'm just pulling blood for her Coggins test. Really happy with the progress we made with her dental today. She can actually move her lower jaw and close her mouth all the way. So she's gonna be so much happier. And I think she'll probably put on some weight. Yeah, good girl. This is Stormy. Uh, she is going to get a dental today. Um, she has recently lost some weight, so um, we have the vet out to check and make sure that there's not anything going on with her teeth. And she says that we have some severe overgrowth, so we're gonna get that taken care of and um, hopefully get her back onto gaining weight. That's perfect. Okay. Some really sharp points. So tea floating went well. Stormy had really sharp ridges all along on the cheek side, tops and bottom. So we were able to reduce all of that and smooth those out. She doesn't have a lot of teeth left, which is consistent with her age. And her incisors in the front are worn almost all the way to the gums. So she probably has a little bit more difficulty biting the grass off, but she's not gaining the weight that we want her to. So we're looking for other answers. We got a fecal sample to check for GI parasites. Um, our modern dewormers are wonderful, but sometimes we miss a, a species of worm or sometimes if they were dewormed too many times with only one kind of drug they can get resistance so we're going to take a look at that fecal today and rule that out as well but i'm hopeful that now that her teeth are a lot smoother she'll have an easier time gaining weight so this is georgia and we are about to do radiographs on her feet she came to us as an owner surrender her feet look like they could be possibly um having some founder issues but we're going to confirm that with radiographs today Thermal imaging camera. So cool. I have an eighty-seven hundred dollars. She's got heat that. right there. What am I doing wrong? I'm doing all of the things right. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take I, this. I literally I take hundreds of radiographs. And then she says, hmm, I didn't turn off this time. <laughs> it turns yeah. off. I'm gonna take this over here real quick. I'm gonna fix this. Our X-ray machine does not like our. Doctor. For the record, it likes me. <laughs> One of the few things on this property that likes me the most. The X-ray machine. <laughs> It's okay, you do everything else better than me. Let me have this, that the x-ray machine likes me. I think there's, I feel like there's a little rotation. Do we need to do the front right? Yeah, that sucks. No better. How's it going, guys? Bye. Bad rotation in the right front. took radiographs on Georgia. She does have digital pulses in one of her feet. So that is an indication when you can feel the blood supply pumping to a foot that you have active laminitis happening. So she does have a digital pulse in one of her feet. And then radiographically, the other foot has more concerning signs of rotation, but her feet are, are overgrown right now. Her heels are so long and her toes are kind of dished out that it's difficult to truly evaluate those angles and rotational changes. And we don't wanna make any decisions based on hoof quality. So the farrier is gonna be here. Georgia's gonna have her feet better balanced and then we're gonna repeat those diagnostics and see if we can determine how significant those changes are. We are finishing up in the tent stall. We have got a lot done today with Dr. Lydia. We have done a bunch of dentals on horses that really needed it, especially the 36 year old pony. So that was great. Um, before we did the dental, she couldn't even close her mouth all the way, and she's already feeling a lot better. We did radiographs on an owner's surrender that we are going to get the ferrous from the hooves and then retake to see if we can fix that alignment. We did ultrasounds on some ligaments as well. So it's been a very busy day. We've had the whole team out here with us. 
We have had a ton of owner surrenders recently, which we appreciate when people will surrender them to us so that way we can get them the care they need instead of just abandoning them or taking them to auction. But it has made for a very busy day. I'm Sailor and I'm an exercise rider here at Horse Plus. As an exercise rider, I do a lot of different things. I help around in a lot of places, but my main job is to pull out horses and make sure that they're all ridden. But I also help with pulling horses out for the farrier, feeding in the mornings and afternoons. Hello, friends. I help hold horses for farrier and vet care. And I groom horses. I have been working here since the end of January, and I have always grown up with horses since I was at the age of two. So working here was just another step to help my equine education. The best part about working here is seeing horses come from an unfortunate situation to finally finding them a forever home. So this is Aramis. I believe she is three or four years old. We got her as a owner surrender with two other horses. Um, the guy just had them in his pasture and he'd feed them every day. So they'd come up and they were pretty friendly with him. But other than that, they didn't really have much handling. So I'm just gonna work on getting her caught in here. Um, she does already have a halter on. So it's just pretty much getting her comfortable with me being next to her and close enough to actually clip this lead rope back onto that halter. Um, I might have to send her around a few times and use a method called drive and draw. So when she's looking at me, I'm gonna try to draw her in by backing away. And when she wants to look away and leave, I'm gonna put more pressure on to get her to leave. She's already got her ear on me, so she's kind of paying attention to me here. She's looking at me in the eye every once in a while, but she's not holding me Attention is maybe like a fraction of a second right there. She's actually paying a little more attention. So I'll back away Right there she took a few steps towards me. So I'm gonna relax a little bit. She's looking and chewing She's understanding what I'm asking here and if I see her start to leave I'll try to draw back a little bit before she has to leave So right there she started going away. She wants to leave. I'll get her to leave So the whole point of this right here, the drive and draw, is to make the right things really easy for her to do and the wrong things a little more difficult, a little more scary. I'm not trying to scare her, but if she wants to leave, I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna work at that if you wanna do it. As soon as she wants to come in though, she gets a break. So right there, she did look at me for a little bit. I'm gonna let her relax a little bit over there. So sometimes that may be all you need. Just work on getting that halter on them, work on getting them caught. You're gonna take it slow for the first few times, especially with horses that you know haven't really been touched, just to get them used to those little things before you really wanna start going into more detail about what you really wanna do with them. A lot of times people, trainers, they'll, uh, They'll get a little greedy. They'll start asking for more when the horse isn't ready, when the horse really just needs to figure this stuff out first. It's like going into a kindergarten class and trying to teach them calculus. Sometimes you just need to start with that simple arithmetic. So right now, I got my truck and trailer here. We're fixing to do something. I'm not quite sure what we're fixing to do, but it looks like there's a halter and lead rope here. Not really 100% on why, but I guess we'll figure it out here shortly. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm crying. You're not allowed to cry. Do you need, do you need sunglasses <laughs> to hide your tears? Oh, now I'm crying. <laughs> oh my God. Breathe. 
you guys be crying in the back. We're not dramatic here, I swear. Okay, the compassion is real. So I went to the May auction and there was a very sweet emaciated horse at the auction, skin and bones, that her owner had just thrown her away. And so we brought her back to the rescue and she had a very slim chance to live. And so she needed round the clock care and weekend care. And so we did that. We took care of her those that first month, every weekend, um, every day. We were with her all the time. And she started getting better. Then she got worse and then she got better. And it's been um, an up and down pattern for her in the road. And I got to thinking, you know, one of these days she's gonna get better and she's gonna be up for adoption. And I just couldn't let her go anywhere else. So we are gonna go fill this halter with a very special girl. Whether it's for better or for the worse As long as we're together we'll make it through this I knew that it was She's gonna be part of our family now the very first time <laughs> Every employee out here is crying We're so excited She's exactly where she needs to be I know every day is a new adventure And sometimes you may feel like giving up But you just gotta look back and remember what we're made of I'm not crying. You're crying. Well, we're taking home June. We've taken care of her since she came here when she was real emaciated and, and not doing too well. And I've just enjoyed her time. And it's just exciting. Just seeing her here at work every day just brings joy. You're getting emotional too. No. Liar. Not yet. <laughs> I can. <laughs> It's exciting. We got her in the trailer. Now we're going to take her to her forever home. Oh, I'll stay by your side.